Hello everyone. For this week's tutorial, I'd like to discuss making GIF animations. These use layers as frames. The order of the frames is bottom to top, so bottom is first and top is last. After you create all your layers slash frames, go to Window and then Timeline. After you click on Timeline, a pop-up should appear, and one of the options should be Create Frame Animation. Click on that. After you click on Timeline, there should be one of two options in a gray rectangle on the right. The first one should say Video Timeline, and the other one should say Frame Animation. Change it so that it says Frame Animation by clicking on the rectangle and getting a drop-down menu. In the Timeline panel, there should be a menu option at the upper right corner. Once you click that, a mini dialog should appear with one of the options being Make Frames from Layers. Click that. Now that you have officially made animation frames, you can either click Play on the Timeline or hit the spacebar to watch the animation play out. Lastly, at the bottom of the Timeline panel, there should be a Repeat menu. Once you click on that, it will show Once initially, but you can change it to Forever with the drop-down dialog. This will make the loop continue on forever, as the title suggests. In order to save an animated GIF, you will go File, Export, then GIF, then save. You can also tweak with the width and height before you actually save it. Now that we have gone over the basics of how the frames work, we can talk about very simple animation techniques. The first of these techniques is simple motion with the first frame being your start, the last frame being your end, and all the middle frames in between simulating the motion. Notice that the more frames you have, the smaller steps you can take, so the more smoother the animation will appear. However, because GIFs use 255 colors total for each individual frame, that means many frames will add up a lot of data quickly. Demonstration of movement. Notice that you can animate a looping background using the principles of simple motion. Within this case, the first and last parts are identical, but the transitional frames in between are all warped around, like in this image. The other basic GIF animation you can do is color transitions or blur and sharpen transitions. This is useful if you want to start blurry and then fade something in, or if you want to create a strobe light effect. As you may be able to guess from the motion part of this video, an image fading into clarity works by the first frame being the most blurriest and then the last frame being the most clear. And all the frames in between being transitions slash shades between those. Like so. You can also put the frames in reverse order to make it fade out to blurriness. You can also create similar fades with black instead of blurriness. And the in-between frames being the original image in varying shades of darkness. For the strobe light filter, you would use the hue saturation adjustment layer. With the first and last frames being identical. 
and all the in-between frames being changed hues. In GIMP, the process for animation does not involve a timeline or anything like that. Because as long as your image is saved as a GIF and not a different file format, all the layers will automatically be converted to slash treated as animation frames. Because there is no timeline, playback is provided under filters instead. Specifically, once you click filters and then animation, the playback button will be right there. On the playback menu, you can either have cumulative layers, which means the layers will combine, or one frame per layer, so each frame will replace the next. You can change the playback speed to be one eighth, one quarter, one half, one times, two times, four times, or eight times the original playback speed. And you can also set the original playback speed to a specific amount of frames per second, the default being 10. The standard playback speed for video animation is 30 or 60 frames per second. The last option is zooming if you wish to view your animation more closely, although it will not scale the actual animation, it's just used for viewing it. At the top, there are options to start the playback, move the playback one frame, move the playback to the next frame, and rewind it to the beginning. There is also an option to detach the dialog from the animation window, and also reload the image. The other filters for animation are optimizing the difference, optimizing it so that it will take the lowest amount of space as a GIF, and unoptimizing it, which undoes the optimization. Although the exact mechanics slash process of creating a GIF is different in GIMP than in Photoshop, the principles of the basic animations discussed during Photoshop apply in GIMP as well, such as basic motion or strobe lights. During next week's tutorial, we will touch on the last part of digital graphics which is complex animation with your own characters, as well as simulating 3D animation using 2D techniques, such as making a character shrink toward the horizon. Don't forget to subscribe if you found this video informative, and make sure to visit the other tutorial videos, and follow me on either Facebook or Twitter for more content.